Big Brother, mainstream media, government cover-ups. You want answers? Well, so does he. He's Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. And now, live from Austin, Texas, Alex Jones. For the rest of this hour and the entirety of the next, we have uh, two uh, great guests on with us. We're going to open the phones up at the end of the show, the last 30 minutes or so. For our guest joining us from Central America, uh, down in Panama, with the founders of Natural Solutions Foundation. I tried to go over both their uh, bios. It would uh, take all day. But uh, Major General Albert uh, in Stubblebine, U.S. Army retired. And, of course, uh, he headed up the U.S. Army's Electronic Research and Development Command, U.S. Army's Intelligence and Security Command. He was the head of Army Special Forces, the head of Fort Bragg. Uh, he's worked with some of the biggest uh, uh, and, and some of the most secretive uh, uh, defense contractors. Uh, he's been involved in some of the most secretive uh, black op operations. And uh, after all these years of research, he's come to basically the same conclusion I have. This is a giant world government set up to carry out eugenics and extermination of the majority of the public with ambient soft kill weapons being slowly and incrementally turned up and then institutionalizing and covering up through compartmentalization the deaths, the diseases, cancer, one in 33 having it now, one in two males, one in three females, uh, diabetes up thousands of percentile. The media is saying that poison, uh, melamine and milk is good, saying that the deadly plastic chemicals are good as people die in mass, uh, saying that GMO foods that sterilize the rats and mice are good for us as it sterilizes the public as sperm counts drop by more than 80%. Women are infertile, just mass plagues, all by design. And they have studied it all. They have inst uh, really single-handedly, with the help of the folks that uh, are members of their organization, helped shoot down a lot of uh, takeovers by Codex Alimentarius. They've been some of the sole reporters who at gunpoint have been pushed out of meetings, uh, public uh, supposed meetings that, they, that they've been you know, guest of at the U.N. Just amazing stories. So I wanted to have them on with us, Major General Stubblebine and the medical director uh, of healthfreedomusa.org, and that is Rima E. Uh, Labo, uh, M.D., graduate of Albert Einstein College of Medicine, and, and then it goes through all of her amazing uh, uh, research and uh, all the great findings that she has made. So we're honored to have both of these individuals, husband and wife, on with us for the balance of the show. And uh, let's go ahead and uh, bring up uh, General Stubblebine, because I, I didn't, uh, the last person I talked to was the doctor. Uh, General, it's uh, good to have you on with us here today. Well, and it's great to be here. A lot is happening. Uh, just a side issue before we get into the Codex Alimentarius, what you saw in Europe, and uh, bring the doctor in. Have you heard all the big announcements that they're going to abolish the National Guard? I have all the documents here, but it's in the Washington Post. And put them under NORTHCOM, and it says for civil insurrection and to work with the police. And uh, they're deploying microwave guns in all the major cities uh, to prepare, I guess, for war with the American people. Uh, I had a retired JAG colonel on uh, first hour saying that this is unconstitutional. Uh, what's your take on it being the former head of special forces? It's absolutely not constitutional, and it bothers the hell out of me, if you really want to know. Well, please elaborate, sir, because this I is... Think, I think it is horrible. You know, we have a constitution, and what we've done with it is burn it, throw it away, and forget about it, and it's wrong. Now, when you were heading up the areas of the Army in the 70s and 80s and into the early 90s, or... Back in the eighties, I mean, back then, if they tried this with the army, then what would what would what would you be saying if you were there today? It'd be a revolt. They would say you can't do that. It's not constitutional. You cannot use the military, the army, or the navy, or the marines, or the air force for civil for civil uh, actions. It is not constitutional and that's exactly what we would have said then why isn't it constitutional no i mean absolutely why is it not constitutional I mean, why did the founders why did every other civilized nation say you don't have your army engaging the people because the army is meant to kill people and break things and go after enemies i mean why did the romans two thousand years ago say it's against the law for caesar to bring the troops into rome because you didn't want somebody who could be 
become then a dictator and by using the army to quell any kind of, of unrest, any kind of uh, disagreement. You didn't want this so-called uh, ruler to take advantage of the power of the army literally to quell the populace. That's the reason that they passed the, uh, made it unconstitutional, because we, they knew then that it was not going to be, uh, correct if a ruler could become a dictator by using the military. Very simple. And that's what the Army War College and the Naval War College and all of them said for hundreds of years. And, um, my dad's got a big book the history of the army and, and right in there it has several chapters saying what you just said so the army has to know what they're being uh, told to do now uh, is treason against the constitution well I you know it's, it's very interesting because uh, at, at some level or some levels we apparently have sort of morphed into uh, this uh, position we're in uh, Instead of, uh, you know, we didn't just sort of jump into this thing one day and, and uh, uh, suddenly be there. Uh, we've kind of uh, oozed or morphed into this thing. And I don't know what the, uh, the current commanders are thinking, but I cannot help but believe that they are very, very upset with some of the things that are going on. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, they, you know, they brought this uh, uh, unit out of Iraq. They, they attached it to NORTHCOM, they said, oh, by the way, your primary mission is going to be to quell uh, riots, to uh, move uh, people uh, into uh, uh, detaining facilities, into eventually what are going to be concentration camps. And that was and two I months? I cannot believe, I, uh, I can't believe that a commander is being given that order doesn't say, what the hell is going on here? Well, that was two months ago, 3,000 troops, the 3rd uh, right. Brigade. Now they announced 20,000, and then I read the fine print. I was going to say, all of the National Guard. Yeah, and, and, all and, of them. And, and then I read deeper, and it talks about Obama's civilian corps of 1 million. Uh, does that concern you, sir, a 1 million man spy corps? Or is that going to be a personal army? Oh, no, it's going to be outside the army. You're right. Yes, they're saying it's going to be a, <laughs> a, 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 a federal domestic force. I mean, I mean, how do people not recognize that that is, as, I mean, that is classic tyranny, is it not, sir? Okay. How can you have your own army? I mean, look at Blackwater. You know, what is Blackwater? Whose allegiance does Blackwater swear to? To the Constitution? Oh, no, 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 no. Is it square to Halliburton? Well, I think so. So how do you then have your own personal army, and then is there more than one personal army out there? You know, Halliburton got one, and uh, Obama have one. Does McCain have one? Who else has their own personal arm? And why? You know, the big question is not do they do, but why do they have it? Well, what's coming, Alex, what's coming that we don't know that each one of these individuals needs their own army? What is that in your, in your educated opinion, uh, General? I think something is getting ready to happen which is devastating. And uh, don't know whether it's another false flag event like 9/11. Don't know whether it's uh, a uh, avian flu pandemic. I don't know. I don't know the exact details. Of what is coming? But you can bet your bottom dollar, people in the power structure, know that they need an army, their private army, 
the people in the power structure know that they need to train the regular army for riot control and people control know that something is coming that is devastating. Well, they know the exact details of it. We do not. And, and and you're saying you believe I mean, they've been setting this up quietly for decades, as you know. It seems it's all yeah. coming to a head. Uh, are you saying, General, the intelligence, is, the, the evidence is showing it's going to be initiated, it's going to be staged? Well, so it's very interesting because let me tell you how the intelligence works. First of all, any single piece of information is nothing more than a dot. That's all it is. It is an unverified piece of information. Then you get another unverified piece of information. 